All right, we're back. Dane, this next pick I am very personally excited about, but also a little conflicted about. And I'll tell you why once you okay. unveil this player to team fit. Go for it. Okay, we're in the second round. We're at pick 46 uh, for the Colts, and I have them taking Ricky Pearsall, wide receiver from Florida, who uh, I know a fan of yours. Uh, This is just a fun one because the fit matches up. Uh, Obviously, there's the Florida connection, but reuniting uh, Pearsall, Anthony Richardson. I think when you look at the Colts, one uh, I'll be shocked if they don't come away from the first two rounds with at least one pass catcher. You know, they Mm -hmm. want to help the young quarterback. And so is it a Brock Bowers in round one, a Brian Thomas Jr. in round one? Or do, say, they take the corner. Say they take a Terry and Arnold or a Quinion Mitchell or say they go in a different direction. Round two, there'll be several options they could go. And, I mean, Ricky Pearsall is just kind of sitting there blinking red lights. Um, if he's there, if he makes it that far, I, I think that'd be the ideal fit, ideal pairing for both sides. Okay, so let me let me tell you why I'm conflicted about this. Because... Okay. Like you mentioned, I love Ricky Pearsall. I'm a huge fan of his game. I love the way he separates. I love that, like, older prospect, but he's not out there out-athleting people. Like, he's a technician that wins with his route running. I think he beats man coverage. He's a player that can, I think, can line up at all three positions, probably primarily a flanker slot player in the NFL. Um, But again, just great hands, too, can make the outstanding catch, just ultra-reliable. I've said he can be like a quarterback's best friend, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and event maybe eventually grow into a guy that you're feeding 120 targets to in the NFL. I think he has like that kind of range of outcomes there. We're pretty high floor, but also kind of an underrated ceiling, in my opinion. I've got him ranked as a, I think my wide receiver six in this class. Like I really mm-hmm. like his game. Yeah. Um, he, he he's a, he, like you said, I'm a fan of his, but. Where, and also, lo- one more positive thing. I do love that in this hypothetical scenario, the Colts haven't done what the like dumb Panthers kind of approach from a few years ago when they had Cam Newton. Dave Gettleman's like, well, yeah, Cam Newton's inaccurate. We'll just get him these big targets. And you got a bunch right. of big guys that can't separate. You're getting like, you got Michael Pittman. You've got Josh Downs here. You've got Ricky Pearsall. Like, you've got separators for a guy that had collegiate accuracy issues. So, again, that's all the stuff I like about it. I do just kind of look at that Colts receiver room and I'm also a big Josh Downs fan. Like I'm I'm looking to see if Chris Ballard's got himself a reception perception subscription after this if he takes Ricky Pearsall. I know he doesn't. I know he's just drafted these athletes. I'm also a big fan of Michael Pittman. Alec Pierce is a guy I I had some hope for coming into the league. I just don't think he's fully taken that step as anything more than just a, a like a role player out at X, but I just wonder like if in my opinion I think if they come away with a pass catcher from this draft, it's somebody to sort of compete in that vertical X receiver role with Alec Pierce like a Brian Thomas made a lot of sense to me if they wanted to go with that pick 15 um, obviously they could use a tight end uh, kind of addition there because Shane Steichen loves to maximize that position so am I like overthinking it a little bit just being like hey is is Ricky Pierce all a little too samey a little too overlappy with like the off ball flanker position that Michael Pittman plays and kind of that interior slot uh, position that Josh Downs I think can really grow and develop into yeah, and I think that with the Colts, they're kind of, if they added Pearsall, I think they've got a couple, I mean, with Pittman and, and Pearsall, a couple guys that could play across the formation in different ways. And, you know, I, I think, because if you, okay, if you, say, say they don't take Brian Thomas at 15, who's that X receiver on day two that would, you know, like, I, I just, it, it's not a position where I think there's a lot of depth in this class, right? I mean, who, who are the X's you like on day two? I mean, I, I, I think A.D. Mitchell ends up going in, first, in the first round, so I don't think yeah. he really makes sense here. It's like the next X receiver prospect when I look at my rankings is probably like Javon Baker. And I think Baker is a little a little overlappy with Alec Pierce, right? And I, mm. I've got – I'm like kind of mixed on Baker. I can talk myself in. I can talk myself out yeah. as like a downfield X prospect. Like, And again, he's, he's a guy I could see end up maybe being more of a vertical Z in the NFL too, mm-hmm. even though he plays a lot on the line of scrimmage. So – like to your point there, I, I don't think there is a like a next natural step down at the X receiver position there. Right. And, and that's what makes it tough. Uh, but I also, you know, this is why you hire uh, Shane Steichen, you know, because True. of the way he wants to be on offense, the way that he can use these receivers, even if there is an overlap, even if there is a little bit of uh, you know, similarities between your receivers. I think that they are versatile enough where they can play across the formation and give you some different things. And so with you know with Pearsall, 
he has that inside out, outside versatility. Is he a true X? No. I mean, he he's not a home run hitter. He's not uh, a guy that's going to be winning vertically all that much. But I still think that there's enough there that if, uh, you know, depending on how you use him, if it's the quick game, um, you know, I, I think most people have seen that catch against Charlotte that he had. Like the ball <laughs> skills, the, the the tracking skills are just so exceptional. You could use him in a variety of roles. And I think the Colts would figure it out and be just fine doing that. Yeah, it's funny. I'm I'm just pulling up Pearsall's reception perception profile right now, and again, it's very funny. Like the first thing I'm I'm seeing is I wrote you you can you get exposure to see him playing a wide variety of roles, literally like word yeah. for word there. Um, and you know, like I said, I think he can play. The reason I ended up ranking him over Lad McConkey, who I'm also a big fan of, is just like I think he can hack it. I think. Lad can hack it outside as a vertical flanker receiver, kind of in that like Tyler Lockett ish way. But mm-hmm. I think Pearsall gives you a little bit more pop against press coverage, 51st percentile in reception perception, success rate versus press. So, like, that's, you know, it's fine in terms of the prospects I'm charting. That's, that's not like a, a huge negative for him, 87th against man coverage. Like, so I'm not. I'm a little bit playing devil's advocate here, uh, Dane, because I do also sure. see how this makes sense. And really, like, I think the crux of this, it comes back to Pittman, who they just gave a long-term extension to. I think Michael Pittman's game, who I've always thought has been really good against press coverage and also been kind of like underutilized as a downfield player. I think he can play X receiver for them. Like, I don't think he has to be this crossing route merchant detached from the formation. Um, Like, I think in this scenario, I, I see your vision here of, We've, we're going to have Pittman playing X sometimes. We're going to have Pearsall playing X sometimes. I don't think you're like Josh Downs. I think again, just because of the size, even though he's a good press coverage beater and good route runner, all that stuff, probably want him inside. But I do see them creating a lot of like mismatches and potential headaches if this is their three wide receiver set. No doubt, and, and I think Pearsall. <laughs> let's be let's be honest. Like some of the, a lot of these white receivers get you know cornered in these the slot role, and he's six one, hundred ninety pounds. Like he's a good sized player. Yeah. Um, and he's been around a while. Uh, he was he was learning from um, Brandon Ayuk at Arizona State uh, his first year. So he he's been around a while, and I think he is NFL ready. Step in from day one, and that versatility across the formation I think is key for what Steichen wants ideally for his receiving core. And yeah, I, I think this would be uh, it would be a lot of fun. You know, I, I all I know is I'm definitely watching the Colts offense to see how it works out. Uh, I- Number one, yeah, I'm with you, buddy. I, I'm I'm actively already starting. It's it's only April here. I'm already starting to kind of try to like, okay, how can I talk myself down from being overexcited about the Colts? Which, by the way, I've done that before because I I've liked these receivers. I, I just I, man, Anthony Richardson year two should be pretty exciting with these guys and the way Shane Steichen talks about Richardson. And we, you're just coming in here putting Pierce on the top. That is not helping me, Dane. Um, <laughs> but we did do a little bit of good consensus building there. Like kind of this is this is what's going to happen in draft rooms and has been talking about in draft rooms like how do we fit these guys together on the roster